Tonight, though, to be brought up Battleground, the second edition, second overall of Battleground 2014. And, um, overall, I thought the pay-per-view tonight, um, was kind of, uh, you know, I know a lot of people were saying, oh, this is the worst pay-per-view of the year, this is the worst pay-per-view since Terrible Punishment. And I think that's stretching it, because I've seen some pretty bad ones from Capital Punishment to here from World Wrestling Entertainment. Um, but overall, I thought this pay-per-view was mediocre at best. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, it was a really good show, I'm listening to a great show. I'm not going to say it was a horrible show, because there was some good, in my opinion, in my honest opinion. Again, this is an opinion, okay? So if anyone says, oh, no, you don't know what you're saying, this pay-per-view sucked. Screw you, man. Like, it's an opinion. Like, relax. But nonetheless, by the way, is it just me, or did other people stream, like, kind of fizzle a bit? Like, those at times when, let's just say, like, Russo versus Swagger, like, they're on the up attack, and out of nowhere, the stream froze for about five seconds. And next thing you know, Swagger's even with a suplex while Russo was just in control. Like, it made no sense. But, um, anyways... Uh, we got two pre-show matches to kick off. We got the Fandango versus Adam Rose. I mean, the eh, match was... I know people were saying it was pointless, and it kind of was pointless, but you know what? At least Layla, the lovely, lovely English muffin, and the uh, good old Giraffe Samurai, at least they look decent, especially, some, especially Layla. And then you had Naomi versus Cameron, and it was just like... Ugh, like... Why is Cameron winning this match? Like, seriously, you're telling me though to be that Cameron's better than Naomi in the ring? LOL, nice joke. Like, seriously, but... And then people are going to be like, oh, no, the feud continues. Yeah, so they have a match at main event. Yeah, it came up with So we kept up this, the uh, pay-per-view off with a two out of three false match between Eric Rowan and Luke Harper of the Wyatt family versus the Usos. And overall, a very good match. This is by far the match then. I don't care what anybody says. This match stole the show. And this was really, really good. I mean, it took quite a while to get to the first fall, but then, you know, it would be, you know, kind of like the predictable amount within, like, I think it was like a minute or two. The second fall already happened, and the white family got the first fall, fifth fall, the Russo. The third fall was like, let's all go out and go crazy. And that's exactly what they did. Um, you know, Russo's picked up the victory here, retained the titles, and. You know, at first, I was like, I, again, I'm having a mixed react feeling with this Uso tag team title. And they're a good tag team, and obviously, you know, they work well together, and they work well with others, you know? But how long can they keep it with until, you know, the good old Ascension come up and freaking destroy them to pieces, as I keep on saying over and over again? I know you're saying, oh, you're saying over and over again, because I'm making a point. Otherwise, I would have dropped it, oh, I don't know, weeks ago, hell, maybe even a month ago. But then we move on to early, later in the night where we get, you know, a little something something. You know, we get, you know, a little backstage segment with Seth Rollins, and, you know, versus, the, you know, get a little promo and whatnot. And next thing you know, Rollins and Ambrose are brawling backstage to the point where God duh, has to come in I yell at Ambrose uh, to them to get him out of the building. Uh, and he needs to get out immediately. Uh, and he got escorted out. So I'm sitting here going, okay, if he's getting kicked out of the building, what the hell are they going to do for freaking Dean or Seth Rollins? This is the hottest thing that WWE has right now. This mid, this upper mid-card feud that they're actually making actually making an effort to build up between Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, two very good workers, both on the mic and in the ring. Okay, what now? So now we move on to the Divas match between Paige, the lovely Paige, versus... A bitchy ass twelve year old known as Miss April Brooks. Um This match was okay. It was alright. You know, it wasn't too shabby. It was in. Uh, however, it made me want to see more. In not a way you probably think of. You probably think oh yeah, that makes you want to see more. That's good. No, this is bad. Because I thought I would see more out of these two. It was kind of like in some sort of way I was kind of disappointed in because I thought this match would be better. I thought this match would be more entertaining. And again, it wasn't bad. I'm not there in the match. It was horrible. It was a lot better than freaking Cameron versus Naomi. That's for damn sure. But it was just, eh, you know? Like, it was alright. I mean, it's kind of, you know, when I think a lot of us are waiting for Pace to turn heel, 
and I'm sure from now to SummerSlam she will eventually turn heel. I hope so. That would be enough of this old frenemies crap. Make AJ, AJ, make Paige turn heel. Build up a little bit more for that match. Have a little better match at SummerSlam. There we go. And that's what overall this pay-per-view felt like. It felt like a preview to, you know, SummerSlam, but overall a lackluster preview of SummerSlam, if anything. But, you know, after that being said, we go off to what I think a lot of myself and a lot of fans were worried about, the match between Rusuk Rukule, Rusuk Rukule, and Jack Flagler. Because, you know, there was dirt sheet reports about how apparently Good V might be pulling the plug between Rusev and Lana because it's getting too controversial and that the whole Ukraine situation, the plane going down, and, you know, the thinking the comparison between this and the whole why Muhammad Hassan lost his freaking push back in 2004 because of the whole bombing in England. Yeah. Now we're really getting too political apparently with this sort of movie. But, you know, nonetheless, the match did happen. And overall, it was uh, not that good. I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, I didn't expect like a five star classic between these two. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, it was just like, okay, these two actually had pretty good build-up, and yet they brought a lot of real-life situations into it, and that's what kind of the build-up made it interesting. But, nonetheless, it was just, like, it kind of felt a little sloppy. You know, it felt like, okay, I mean, Rusev did one of the worst sellings of the ankle lock I've ever seen in my life. Like, I don't know if it was so much Swagger's fault for not putting it on right, the, the ankle lock, but, like, or she said the picture lock, but, like, he had the freaking ankle lock, and Rusev's like, Like, why are you going sideways? Like, I don't understand that. I was like, ugh. And, I, and the match was a bit slow. I mean, you obviously have a big guy like Rusev, who is athletic for a big guy. And, you know, you have Swagger, who is pretty athletic himself. Um, you know, it just felt kind of slow. The whole match itself kind of felt a little slow. I'm not saying they'll do flips nonstop. Obviously, they're not going to do that. But, you know, mix it up a little bit. And it was just, they never really got to that, you know, Spark, you know, it did end up in a count out that Rusev won, and people were like, oh, why did Rusev win a count out? Duh, so they got a rematch at freaking SummerSlam. Because SummerSlam is going to be the rematch. They might as well just screw state SummerSlam. WWE presents rematches, where every match on this card is basically a freaking rematch. Yeah? Except for obviously the main event, I'll get to that a little later. <laughs> but yeah, so, yeah, I mean, it's good to see Lana and whatnot, but it's just like this match was kind of neat. The crowd was in on the wheel of people. It looked up good. By the way, the crowd tonight in Tampa, I mean, I've lived in Tampa for five years. This crowd was better than I thought it would be. Yeah, I'm not saying, I'm not saying much. I mean, they were kind of like, yeah, I thought they'd be kind of, you know, that silence, but. So, yeah. We move on to Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose. And basically, Seth Rollins comes out with his briefcase, and the crowd chance he sold out. Uh, he basically tells Justin Robb to say he's a winner by forfeit, and he's like, winner by forfeit, uh, Seth Rollins, and, you know, Seth Rollins is like, yeah, you know, and he's about to leave the ring, boom, here comes Dean Ambrose, Mr. Renee Young himself, you know, quote-unquote team master, uh, comes in the crowd and starts beating the holy hell out of them, they brawl, security has to get in it, and to be honest with you, I sus like Daddy tweet this on Twitter, and I actually agree with him, yeah, I usually agree with him most things, I'm not trying to kiss his ass or anything. I'm just saying, I usually agree with him. And this one, I do agree. This was better, better than, it's better that they did this, you know, a little brawl, than them having a regular match or having a match in general, because it builds up more. Neither guy in the situation looks weak. You know, you don't make, oh, well, you know, Seth Rollins ate the pin here, or Dean Ambrose ate the pin, ate the pin here. No, none of those guys did that. So it kind of brings up more and more to the feud with Chief SummerSlam. And again, this is the hottest thing that we have to offer right now. This is the only good thing in my opinion. They have to offer them for a second. All right? Other than maybe, the, you know, somewhere in the Diva division, they can, somewhody I guess the tag team division, they got nothing else to offer. All right? This is the best thing they have going. All right? Just, you know, sort of being what they're doing. And, of course, God got in there. He's like, I got to separate them all. But, you know, it was not too bad. It was pretty good. Probably one of the better things of the night. This and the opening match was the best thing of the night. So now we move on to Bray Wyatt versus Chris Jericho, baby. And uh, I think a lot of people were shocked by their, what happened in this match. You know, meaning you know the ending. You know, the match itself was okay. 
you know, I felt this match could be honestly the gutter. You know, I get Jericho had a little bit of ring rust, you know, not being in, you know, actually, no, he was in a match with some weeks ago, he got back. But, you know, he hasn't been on pay-per-view, you know, pay-per-view match in, like, over a year. So, you know, I expect to see somewhat of ring rust there from Jericho, and I think there was here. You know, Bray Wyatt, he did his usual, you know, not too shabby thing. Uh, but, you know, I guess the ending made sense. I thought they were kind of go for, like, a no contest situation, even though I guess early in the night you already had a, you know, forfeit, you had a count out. So you kind of needed a decision here. So I understand what WWE's going for. And, you know, plus, you know, Jericho just came back. You need to elevate, you need to elevate him again to make him look like a threat. And, you know, it was just sad, but, okay, pretty wise, basically, I'm not counting Extreme Rules, okay? He practically lost, like, every single pay-per-view since, like, one use the chamber. And that's when the Shields were still together. So, you know, hopefully, Wyatt gets his win at, you know, SummerSlam like he did last year. He came. I think that'll be the same situation. And I won't be surprised, honestly, if Bray Wyatt kicks, kicks freaking Chris Jericho's ass at freaking SummerSlam. So, yeah, it was all right, you know. And now we move on... Oh, I should have said, excuse me, before I say that, this was so weird, alright? This was like one of the weirdest segment things I've ever seen. Seth Rollins goes to the parking lot, and he has a security. He's like, oh, thanks for coming here, I'm all sad, you know, I can leave, just go. So he's going to his car, and he, and, he, and then he stops, then he looks around, then he backs up a bit. And I'm like, this looks like something else. This is what I don't get with the V. They try to make this into, like, a B-rated horror movie. Like, we saw it, obviously, like, was it, a couple years ago called Zack Ryder, Kane, E, John Cena thing. And we saw it earlier this year with Kane, Daniel Bryan, you know, Brie Bella. Now it's just, like, this is, like, their version of, like, a killer. I mean, not so much of a monster, but just a killer. Like, you, you're worried the killer's around, and you're just like, oh, no. It's kind of like, Seth looks so freaking paranoid. I get it, he's supposed to be paranoid. But it was just to the point where it just felt, like, kind of cheesy and corny. And then, freaking, you know, oh, looks like something like freaking The Undertaker or something. Like, freaking Seth is, like, popping out of this freaking Seth's trunk and just attacks her freaking in there. And I'm thinking, wow, this is good. Like, obviously, they're paying more attention. And I said this on Twitter. This, between Seth and Dean, they got a lot more attention than freaking freaking Seth did all night. And he's supposed to be your world champion. And then... And, and I'm not complaining whatsoever. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying in the situation that, you know, it's good to see two young talents going after each other have, have so much good chemistry and do well. So I'm all for this. And, you know, Seth got his car eventually and ran off. But it was it was interesting. Like I'm telling you, the only, if you ever want to take a peek at someone in this pay-per-view again, look at these segments and then watch the opening match. That, that's it. That's all you need to watch. That's all. Screw everything else. Just watch that. So then you go to the Battle Royal for the vacant WWE Intercontinental Championship. It was kind of cool. Before the match started, he had Wade Barrett come out. I kind of marked out a bit. I was like, yeah, bad news. And he's coming out there. He's like, I'm afraid of some bad news. Just like the elderly people here in Tampa. It's going to be good once you got it. You know, me and move to Tampa. But you're waiting for the United Rule. You know, meaning that like, they're eventually going to lose the IC title to him. So. But anyways, you had... I don't need to read you the names. You already know the names of the people in it. I'm surprised RVD wasn't in it. I was like, this is RVD supposed to be in here? But anyways. So the match happened, you know. All you need to know from the match was, the only highlights were there was a typical Kofi Kingston. Because God forbid Kofi Kingston doesn't do highlights in the freaking Battle Royal. Because he's not taking freaking John Morrison's job for the last several years. But with that being said, him and Cesaro practically stole the match. You know, they didn't steal a show, they stole the match. And they did a very good job, a very entertaining job of doing so. And, you know, there was at one point where Big E got eliminated, and it looked like Kofi was about to get eliminated, but he, he held on to Big E. And Big E's just holding him like a statue, just like, not a lot, no joke. And then, you know, next thing you know, out of all people, Keith Slater eliminates Cesaro. And I'm like, oh, here comes the internet raging. And yes, a lot of people on Twitter got me. I'm like, screw you, Keith Slater. And he actually got a pop, a huge pop for that. Bo Dallas got a big pop, too, for eliminating, uh, I think it was Tedos O'Neal, and then he got eliminated. I was like, oh, no, not Bo. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was between at the end, basically, Dolph Ziggler and Sheamus. I was like, oh, they're going to unify with Sheamus. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be Ziggler, you know, becoming a Union Cardinal champion again. 
you know, Vic eliminates Sheamus, and then, oh, there comes the Miz sneaking out of nowhere, and then it was just like, oh, like the crowd, <laughs> the crowd was dead when the Miz won, and I, you guys know me, I'm a Miz fan for life, but like, oh my god, why does this guy need the championship again? Do you not remember the last time the Miz was in the Conor Chip? It did not work well, it did not work well at all, and it was just, ugh, like, like, I get it, he's trying to do this cheesy, rip-off Hollywood rock gimmick with the sunglasses, and, you know, hey, look at me, I'm a superstar, I'm a rock, I'm a Hollywood star, you know, but it just, it just comes off so cheesy, and it's just, uh, hey, Miz is Icy Champ, woo. <laughs> but then we go to the main event, oh, by the way, I love the little promo video they did for SummerSlam that looks exceptionally well, screw Raw tomorrow, I'm sorry, but I do not look forward to Flo Rider being at my evening, but nonetheless, uh, we got the fatal four way for the World Heavyweight Championship: Kane versus Roman Reigns versus. <laughs> let's just say it's Demon Kane and Roman Reigns versus. <laughs> and by the way, so much for retiring that big old, you know, shiny belt, gold belt. Yeah, you know, we're not supposed to be retired. You know, but well, you don't always believe in the dirt sheet, guys. So then you had the fatal four way match. It was uh. <laughs> like it was, I'm not saying it was bad. It was, it was like this pay-per-view overall, mediocre. Like it was, eh. like it was like okay, Roman Reigns got a huge pop. He started doing his thing, and the you know, crowd loved it. Kane did his whatever. Reigns wearing his blue trunks, thinking it's freaking 2003 all over again. Um, and then you know, Cena's being like, you, that's all you need to know. I mean. <laughs> Yes. I mean, freaking Cena hits the AA on freaking Orin on top of Kane, and then he pins Kane, and then it's it, and he's off just like, yep, can't wait till freaking Lesnar tomorrow. Yeah, I can't wait for that shit. I mean, you did have a few good spots. I mean, you had Orin hitting the spear, you know, through the barricade on Orin. That was a sick spot, you know. So, it was, it had its couple of good moments, but again, overall, it's not a match that you're going to sit there going, oh my god, that was so great, I'm going to remember this. Like, I'm sure by freaking hell in the snow, you're going to forget about this match. Like, I could do not. Hell, by SummerSlam, you might even forget about this match. So, you know, I thought maybe they would have good, duh, interfere, because I thought we were building, uh, Reigns, uh, versus Gata at SummerSlam, uh, but I guess we're going to wait that's tomorrow night, uh, or should I say tonight, uh, but... Anyways, that's what I thought overall, Battleground, overall, an old mediocre pay-per-view, nothing special. So if you missed it, you didn't miss much. Uh, but, you know, there's a couple of nice things, a lot of ugh things, so take it as it is, so, yeah.